And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the coverage of the Force Has Power Tournament. It is the second map now between Team ESPC and Team Intuition. We will be playing it out on Crossfire, the lovely Crossfire. The first map went in favor of Team ESPC 13-2. And uh, now going on to the second map, we will see if Intuition can bring it back. This is, of course, the knife round, as uh, I'll do the introductions. For Intuition, we have Bernardo Porn in Exio, Taylor Dior, and Jean. For ESPC, we have Fake Cinder, Saruz, and Replan. And, of course, Napaski sneaking in at the bottom. And uh, should be... I think this should be a little bit of a better map. It's either going to be a complete whitewash again, but if Intuition are not able to utilize the attacking side effectively, then, uh, I mean, of course, it's going to go in a very bad direction. Now, uh, let's see here what Intuition... Oh, sorry, as uh, what are ESPC going to be choosing? Well, they're going for... Oh, going for defense. That is a very interesting one. As a, attack is usually the preferred side if the choice is yours. So we'll have to see how um, Intuition play this one. Now I'm going to start it off here with Replan with the scope. Do love starting it off with the scope, seeing how they play the opening seconds of the round. Smoke unfortunately goes up for him and his vision is completely blocked. Diora waiting for his second speed, uh, sorry, waiting on uh, Replan's second peak spot. And a very interesting tactic here from ESPC, mauling their way up onto this B side as a... Uh, Seems to be a first round tactic. Napaski takes out Jean. We have Cinder over here on the B all on his own. He is heavily tagged up. Can he sneak into the B alley? Yes, he can. A very good movement from him as he now moves up onto... Oh, cheeky wall bang. Takes up an order to pawn. And now with Diorio last man standing, Napaski takes him out. I cannot believe that strat actually pulled off the way it did for ESPC. Fantastic play from them to, uh, to win the first round there. Let's have a look at how Diorio are going to be playing this one out. On the attacking side, the scope. Can he find anything in the opening seconds? Does not seem so. And uh, then goes on to his second position to try and watch the little gap through the bus to try and catch any players running into the watermelon building. Unfortunately, he won't find anything. Taylor, on the other hand, SMG still back at spawn. Very interesting to see an SMG play this far back. I would not expect an SMG to stay this far back. I mean, the whole point of the weapon is to have a close-range weapon, and he's not pushing up onto the A building, so... Hmm, it's also very interesting that he'll spray through a wall when uh, his teammates are already inside the building. Nade's going to catch him off guard as he pushes onto the B bomb site, and uh, that is probably the most common form of deaths on the attacking side, is trying to get that bomb down over on B, and Nade's running down on you. So now we'll see how Cinder and Diora play this out for their team. Can they bring this one back? They really have the odds stacked up against them. Oh, Cinder takes out Exio. What am I saying, the odds stacked against him? Oh, it was, sorry. What am I saying? It's not Cinder. It is Cinder. Promod overlay. How can there be two Napanskis? Silly Promod. Now let's see, we have got Diora here with the bomb. Are there any nades available for ESPC to use? Oh, Diora actually spots. Cinder and doesn't land the frag. He spots Napaski too. Oh, really does like see him. Th oh wow, just Diora, just wow. I am actually lost for words at the uh, the missing that is currently occurring, occurring. And uh, with that, we will be seeing a 2-0 score lead come out from ESPC. Cinder carrying on five frags as uh, Saruz struggles to get on the scoreboard. You said, but so the same for Jean. Then again, Jean is a little bit more of a worry because he's on the attacking team that's currently losing 2-0. And we do see Banana 2 pawn trying to push up here on the B side, seeing if he can catch off any very aggressive players. Napaski takes out Taylor as uh, oh, he has spotted a player through the wall, lands a couple of tags. As, uh, oh, his teammate actually comes up from the side and cleans him up. I believe that was then uh, Saru's pushing up there on the B side. Exo goes for the fake on the bomb, doing a little bit a little bit more discipline, goes up for the fake, draws out the nades, and uh, as you can see, was able to sneak away from that one. Fake the man going to be watching that bomb, trying to catch off anything moving onto the bomb site. Replan and Fake open up with a frag apiece. And that will reduce intuition down to a number that not anyone would want to be up against three ESPC players. See how I worded that? It makes it very convincing. <laughs> Fake with another one here onto Banana. Right under the bus. Cinder onto Diora coming in from behind. And that'll be a 3-0. Lead for ESPC on the defending side. People, I cannot tell you how big that is. As, uh, I mean, right about now, you should be leading on the attacking side. If the teams were even, it should, the attacking side should be 2-1 up at least. Now, Replan, going to Cafe, seeing if he can maybe find a frag trying to cross the street, although he's seen nothing. 
And with that, it's either going to signal he is being rushed, which he was, and his teammate helped him out, or the players are going towards A. And uh, is that so? Wow, X actually makes his way all the way into back here with an AK. Takes out Cinder, and Saruz also drops to Diora's scope. Now, ooh, X here with another one from a seemingly very troubled first map is playing great the second one. Now making his way towards a lower A. Has got an SMG with him and an AK. So he's got both range advantages. Napaski sitting in B alley has got that AK with him too. He could have maybe spotted X here moving into the A side. And he's going to be t trying to time nade the bomb. We'll see there on 50 seconds nade goes out. Does it connect with anything though? No, it does not. And uh, Replan casually just walking up the street. No worries for him. Like a boss. And uh, Jean with a little peek onto Napaski. Nicely played from him. Going to open it up once more. Replan, top of the street. You know what? I've actually got it in him. I just have this really awkward feeling right now that he's going to be able to clutch this. Does spot the player on the bomb. Tags him up to 98. And so unfortunate. Now moving down here towards the lower light side. Pulls out the Deagle, lands a couple of tags onto Exio, but Exio, the fearless man, repeaks, And that's going to be the replay and goes down. Two ones, your scoreline has a... Uh, sorry, Intuition finally take their first round. And they had it with three players standing. I think they just need to try and repeat that, although that's nearly impossible in COD4. To try and repeat results. Dior takes a tag to the leg, but uh, luckily we'll be able to walk that off. And is trying to cover his teammates moving over onto the B bomb site. I do see Diora peeking over towards Cafe. Doesn't spot anything. Cinder takes out John. Saru's pushing up into the watermelon area. Takes out one. There's still two players to find, though. He get himself a lovely number of frags. Replan takes out Taylor. Has the SMG at the top of the street for some other reason. Still not 100% sure on the, the positioning of Taylor in this matchup. Diora taking out Fake. Exio into Replan. And ESPC need to be careful. There's only one frag away from having an uh, even number of players aside. And of course, on the attacking side, that's exactly what you aim for. The Napaski's having none of it. Grabs two easy frags. And that'll make it to a 4-1 scoreline. Things looking great for ESPC so far. Uh, let's see how Dior has been playing it. I'm seeing he's still not trying to peak replan. And I really think he should maybe... Do that, but I mean, well, he needs to do something to be able to change it up for his uh, for his team. I mean, it, it is crossfire; it's a very long, wide, open map. Uh, scope should be your fundamental weapon. And you know, looking over at the scoreboard, he's only got three frags in five rounds. And uh, I really feel that it should, at, at least, at minimum, be five. But um, doesn't seem to be going so. But on a two point, takes out fake with a little headshot. Send it with a nade towards the top of uh, the t t towards the top of the street behind the stairs. And, oh, throws one and gets one in return. Dior lands the frag there onto Sunder. And now Banana 2 Pawn trying to jump towards the front of the bus. I don't know how much that's going to be helping him. As uh, he does take a shot from behind. Napaski trying to move out towards back A. Trying to get some cover towards the bomb. But the bomb is smoked up and that's going to make things a whole lot more difficult. Although he is trying to get positioning into the lines area. Bernardo Dupont coming in from BLE takes him out. 2-4 as a, once again, three players left standing. Intuition seems to be holding strong here. And I can only credit them for that. Looking over the scoreboards, though, nothing too interesting. Seems that the top frankers and the bottom frankers are rather even, actually, uh, among both teams. Replan going in towards the top of the runes area. Back towards this spawn side. Not often you see this position being played, although ESPC having a field there once again. SMG in hand. Cinder pushes all the way to the top of light and uh, has already found one. He knows there's another one just around the corner. His teammate actually coming in to help him out. Diora goes down, and that is terrible if you're being pressured like that on the light side. But then again, if you're not defending it well enough, then uh, ESPC are going to be taking advantage of it. I can nearly guarantee you that. Saruz takes up another two points to finish off the round. 5 2, 3 round. Three round score difference in the end. Or oh, after seven rounds at least. There are still a whole five rounds left in this half. Oh, well, let's take it away with one of the SMGs. Let's take it away with S Banana 2 points. See how going to be playing it here on the, the A side. Or how he's going to try and defend this push here from the SPC. Has made it towards back A. Does he land the frag? Yes, he does. And moves into top A. In Exio lands a frag onto Saruz. And this round is starting to look really good for uh, Intuition. 
Dura takes out Fake. Replays your last man standing. Dura lands a frag too. And finally coming out of his little turtle shell is Dura himself. And that's going to bring it back to 5-3. Now, by no means close just yet. But uh, if Intuition tie this one up, take it 6-6 at the half. I think they've got a chance. It all depends on how good ESPC's attack are. Now we will be seeing Banana 2 Pawn push into this B side. Seems to be changing it up. Relying heavily on his spawn, which is what the top teams will do. You will see a lot of the times the players actually uh, choosing the side they attack on the spawn they have. Sometimes even weaponry. But on a two point takes out to Ruse though. And all five players, I'm oh, sorry, I was about to say all five players still standing for intuition. But make that four now still, nevertheless, rather impressive. As uh, Exio takes out Napaski, replaying your last man standing. He'll be taken up on a two point. He finally pushed into the cafe. And that'll mean... 5-4 as a ESPC called a timeout and I can guarantee you that's not because of technical problems. But either way, it's a good time for us to have a quick little recap, guys. If you want to go check out Quad V on Twitter, hit us up at, at Quad V on YouTube. We are forward slash Quad V TV on Facebook. We are forward slash Quad V. If you guys want to check me out, I am facebook.com forward slash Menace FPS. I am on Twitter at Menace. This is currently the second map of the Fast Hosts Power Tournament. Call of Duty 4 match between Team ESPC and Intuition. Team ESPC took the first one 13-2, which is impressive by any means. Western Wolves currently playing their opponent's first map went 13-0, which uh, I, I can understand is expected in the groups, but by no means something that you want. And uh, I lie, it seems Napaski actually timed out. So it wasn't a it wasn't a tactical timeout. It's a good it's a good timeout though. I mean, um, no matter how you look at it, intuition we're having quite a bit of a of a run there. Got quite a couple of rounds in a row. And I will say that so far, I'm really impressed with the servers we are using. Of course, it is the fast host servers. Do go check them out. As you can see, I've got 34 ping and I'm currently uploading at four megaseconds. So I have no idea what connection I'm getting to the server, but it must be good. And uh, Team ESPC off finish. So from Finland, get a nice little 70 ping there. Of course, I can only ask them what the latency is, or what the latency is like. Some of the intuition players are European, some of them from Belgium. One, I think one of them is uh, from the UK. So again, having a look at their pings, not looking too bad. But yeah, do go check out Fast Hosts, of course, the sponsors of the tournament, alongside Game Shadows Epic and Epic LAN. And now, are we going to be finally going back underway? ESPC seem to have any two players still raring to go. Alrighty then. Let's hop right back into this matchup. As, uh, let me not forget to change that. Coolio. So, 5 all the scoreline, first, sorry, second map, first half. Let's, uh, let's see what, where's one of the AKs? Where's Napaski going? What's he doing on the street? This is a very aggressive push here from Napaski, pushing up towards the light. He has got smoke on his right-hand side from his teammates. Going to carry on pushing. And this is where things are getting dangerous. This is where he needs to start playing very carefully. He pops out another smoke. Going to be covering him up from any players that have crossed the street and watching back towards his position. Moves up into light. There's a player around the corner. Misses the knife. Misses the AK. But on a two point with the Deagle. Takes out Napaski. He's so close there. Cinder pushes up. Once again sprays. But on a two point picking up another relatively easy frag. So Ruiz finally getting a reply as he takes out Exio. And uh, Taylor onto fake. And that didn't go all too well for ESPC, I will say. And is he been on a two pawn with the third of the round as he takes out Saru's replaying your last man standing. Trust him to be the reliable man. Still up, still getting frags for his team. Nade goes out onto the bomb. Will it try and do a fast plan? Will it catch a frag from? Yes, it does. Takes out Jean. And uh, this is setting himself up for a very nice little one versus four if he pulls this off. He's taken out two already. Still needs to find another two. Is watching the bomb. Is watching towards back A. Spray coming in from towards... Sorry, coming in from Cafe, actually. All the, but on to Porn ran all the way around to make sure that he got a good clear shot onto Replan. Replan did not expect that. I didn't expect that. But uh, actually, very good play. So uh, can't fault him on that. Now let's see how 
Mr. Diora is going to be taking it on. Has started off here with a frag on Tinapowski. He's going to be going back into the spawn building as Saruz and his team made one small push into that B side. It seems that they are consistently aggressive on this B alley. Saruz taking out Taylor. Taylor for once pushing up here very aggressively, uh, or at least that we've seen on the uh, on the B side. Pretty much been lazing around towards the light area. Saruz with Deagle in hand gets tagged up. We'll brush that one off. They are holding the B site pretty well. As uh, where is Cinder? He is towards the or just behind lockers. And uh, we'll go to grab a frag there onto Exio. Dior is still alive. And uh, he's going to be landing the frag onto Saruz. Jean to replant the Pasky. Your last man standing. I lie to Cinder. Because Cinder is still alive and Napansky is not as ProMod will actually show you and lie to you at the same time. But that of course does mean that Cinder has not taken a single tag this round as soon as he takes a tag we will be seeing uh, his name actually change. Now moving out onto the street takes out Jean. Where is Diora? Oh has he been spotted? He's looking at the feet of Napansky but that's not, sorry, of Cinder and that's not going to be enough. Cinder flying his way over the, uh, oh brilliant shot there from Cinder through the wall lands the headshot. And will, of course, take out the Dior, the final player there for the round. Taking it to 5-6. And uh, I will say that Intuition, even though, you know, New PC got that last round, really have been fighting it back rather well. Yeah, uh, Banana 2 Pawn throws out a smoke towards the cafe side. Just trying to catch up anyone trying to push out of the cafe area. Two players down the side. Saruz wakes up, takes out Diora and Taylor, pulls out the Deagle. Can he get the third and final frag? No, he can't. His teammate Cinder closes that one off. 5-7 at the half. Looking very good for Team ESPC. And uh, no doubt they should have quite a bit of an easier task having the uh, two-player advantage going into the attacking side. Now I'm going to start it off here with replaying as I do with every start of the half with the scope. Gotta love the scopes. It's one of those weapons that everyone wants to play, but it's so difficult to master. Luckily, we have people like Replan that can do the stuff. Well, I say that, he just missed the shot and got killed because he fail-switched his weapon. Wow, that is such a bad curse from me. I apologize, uh, Replan, when you watch this, when you watch this VOD. Uh, I didn't mean to do it. ESPC, they seem to be struggling here off the bat as uh, they try to push up onto the B-bomb side. They aren't getting many kills. And loads of the players have died. They've only got two left standing. Cinder takes out Infexio as he moves into Cafe. Shot rings off off to his left-hand side. And he's got to be careful for that one. He has got a teammate moving over onto the A side. It is Saruz. Saruz, where are you peeking, lad? All over the place. As uh, he tries to find the scope. Makes a little bit of noise jumping around lower light. Has he spotted anything? No, he has not yet. Saruz with the AK in hand, looking everywhere on the map. He can try and find the scope. It looks like he's pretty determined that the scope shot did come from top ruins. Of course, no player has pushed out from the ruins area, and the scope was still alive. So uh, it pretty much assures him that the scope is there. And now Dior is your last man standing. Fire has come in. He is going to be dropping down. Takes out center with a nade. So that is the player on the bomb gone. Saruz is towards top A. He'll easily be able to take out Diora, and that's going to push it to 8 5 3 round advantage in favor of ESPC. And uh, looking good so far for, uh, well, Cinder at least. Holy mackerel, 18 frags uh, after only 13 rounds. Dad is going to be complaining. Replan starts off with a frag onto Jean. Carries on going forward onto the bus. Three frags early on for ESPC, nearly solidifying them this round. I mean, only if they make a mistake and they mess this up. Replan flying around just because he can. And uh, we'll go down to Exio's SMG. Napaski going to pick up the frag. Saruz onto Diora. 9 fives the scoreline. And full round advantage now sitting comfortably in the hands of ESPC. And Cinder didn't get a frag that round. Interesting stuff. I'll be seeing replay and push towards the top of this corner building, seeing if he can actually get something right this round. Has spotted a player, misses the shot onto. Let's see who that was. It was Jean sitting at the bottom of the street with an AK behind the car. Unfortunately, not connecting anything or no shots landing onto replay. Fake going in for the fake. I always love the. Uh, I want to say paradox in that one, but um, the similarities. What do you call it? It's some English term for oxymoron. 
There we go. It's an oxymoron. That's the one I was looking for. Taylor going to be pushing into cafe side. See if he can get an early little bit of aggression here onto light. Smokes around from his teammate. Great stuff for him so far. He's got the cover. He's got the flash. He's got the smoke. He's got the nade. And he's going to go towards B, which uh, does not work out for him as Cinder takes him out. Smoke going to go out from Cinder onto the bomb side, allowing his teammates to go in for that plant. He's going to carry on watching those stairs, making sure his teammates are covered. Exio goes down. AK close range is never going to help you. Napaski onto Jean Dior, your last man standing. He's going to be having that R700, trying to push in towards back A. Fake goes down off the try and actually go for a plant, but Dior is nade raining in from above. Above. Woosa. Getting a little bit excited on this one. Now Diora trying to scope over towards the bomb. Cinder comes in from behind though. Going to push it to 11. Five, only two more rounds in this one for ESPC. And they will be taking their first group game in the Fast Host Power Tournament. Now uh, let's hop it away here with Saru's nade flying out towards the bottom of the street. And uh, how will he be following this one up? Seems the nade connected with Taylor. He's going to push right into A completely uncontested. No issues from him. And with Cinder taking out Banana 2 Pawn. Exio taking out Napaski. Saruz is going to get himself a frag onto Diora. Second one of the round for him. Can he go for the third? There is another player in this cafe. Can he land the frag? No, he can't. Cinder steals it away from him. And Exio, your last man standing. As uh, he does land a superb deagle onto Saruz. But unfortunately, Replan is going to be right behind his teammate. And will land the frag. And that'll mean that we are pushing it to 12, 5, 7 map points on the board here for ESPC. Send out 25 frags. My word, man, calm down. Can Replan finally get a frag on the spot? Or are my curses really just going to get him the whole time? Seems to go for the silent drop, falls off, doesn't take any damage from that one. Jean towards lower A is going to take out Saru. Send on the other hand, you see, if you allow him to go this far behind enemy lines, then uh, you know there's troubles. Now we do see Senna with the Deagle takes out Diora and uh, it is only going to be down to Banana 2 Pawn and Sean to try and save it for their team. Make that only Banana 2 Pawn. He is towards back A. He's heavily tagged up. There's not much he can do in this position. He can't stop the bomb plant. But, uh, you know, miracles do happen. He has sort of taken out two. Takes out a third with his Deagle. Holy shit. ESPC have just all fallen in front of him and now going to be moving up as uh, there is a player on that bomb. It is replan. No, it is not. It is fake, and he's staying on the bomb. He's not peeking out. Finally does peek out, nearly gets killed. But that is it. 13-5 is your final score. And uh, ESPC will be taking their first group game. Fantastic stuff. Their intuition trying to put up a fight, but unfortunately not being able to hold off long enough. And uh, that has been it, guys. I hope you guys have enjoyed the games, though. Of course, there will be way more coverage coming from the Quad V side of things for the Fast Toads Power Tournament. So do stick around. Do follow the channel. And, of course, check us out on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook, which you can see on the bottom right-hand side. If you guys want to check me out, I'm at Menace on Twitter. I'm forward slash Menace FPS on Facebook. Lots of love from me. But for this evening, for now, I hope you guys have an awesome night.